Greetings and welcome back to Dwayne's Astrophotography. Okay, we're going to immediately get into uh, some uh, pics and sight here. Uh, I have purchased some data from uh, Starbase and I will uh, include that link uh, at the end of the video here uh, for purchasing. Uh, it's a site that I found that has some pretty good data here. We can see it here. It's uh, not that high of res data, but it's not bad. I think there are, these files are only about 11,000, uh, 11 kilobytes. Typically, on my cameras, I get anywhere from 50 to 100,000 bytes. And these are only about maybe 10% of that. So I think the cameras are pretty low res, but um, hey, it uh, it works well. It's uh, a nice group of subs, very balanced subs, as you can see. Uh, all right, let's get into this. Uh, one of the things we're going to do first is we're going to rename these. Uh, this is the HA. So I stack these, by the way, also. So they, they give you all the FITS files and calibration files, darks, dark flats, and those kinds of files. Uh, so this is where we begin with the stacked files uh, in TIFF format. All right, let's get into this now. Let's go to uh, Identifier. I'm going to identify this as HA. And then this one is uh, our O3. and S2. Doing a right click on this, getting identifier, and S2. All right. Now it's interesting, you can see subtle differences in these. This is pretty a pretty amazing difference here. I can see the helmet is kind of missing in this one, uh, in the S2. Uh, kind of interesting. See, we, we, we see these are facing this direction, uh, the horns on the helmet, if you will, in the opposite direction here on H. So first thing we're going to do is flip this around. So it's going to process all processes and get a fast rotation right there. And we'll leave it at 180. And we're going to hit the button and flip that thing around. Okay, now it matches the other ones. Okay. Now, one thing we have to do is align these because when I stack them, I did not... Um, align them during stacking. No problem. Let's go to HA. Let's go to process. All processes start uh, alignment. And let's put the HA in. So we iconize it down. Pull it into the field here for reference image. The very top. Come over here. Iconize these down as well. This is our O3. Goes in here. And our S2. And goes in here. These are the target images. Leave everything else alone. Hit the circle. And this will align those frames together. Zero failed. It's an important thing to make note of. So we can move on here. Let's stretch this. Let's stretch both of them and bring the other HA down also right there and let's compare these now there we've got alignment now perfect alignment okay all right uh, let's do a DBE on these um, let's start off with the s2 here we're going to come up with process all processes and background modelization dynamic background extraction uh, we're going to keep this simple and tight here. We're going to go with, uh, let's go with uh, 12 of these per row. Should be enough. Send this out to about eight. And we'll go to our tolerance here of about one and a half. And we want to make sure we do our subtraction and very important, disc discard a background model. Okay, so let's generate. And we see the X's, if you can see them in a row, 
whenever we see a star like this, we're going to eliminate it. Okay, I'm going to let you listen to the background music, and I'm just going to go through this uh, from start to finish. Okay, that was pretty quick. We're done because this turned gray. We've got these all checked off so we can now process this. All right, we're finished now. Let's stretch that out. Let's take this out here as a process because we're going to try to see if we can do this in an automatic fashion for the video. Stretch it out now. Pretty good. All right, we'll take this one over. I can ize this back up. We'll go to the next one. Let's go ahead and go to 03. Let's just see if we can drop the process on and get something pretty nice here. I think we're going to be okay doing it this way. Looks pretty good. I'm sure we don't have anything major missing here. Uh, no, I believe that I believe we're okay. We're going to keep that. We'll iconize this back up, drop it on our final image to the process, all processes, star exterminator, and hit the button to remove the stars. Same way with this, Let's pull this over on this one and remove the stars. And finally, one more time up on this one. It's tucked in behind there. Okay. Let's iconize all these down uh, that have the stars missing. So we can begin the next step here. And here are our stars. This one went up here someplace. Let's make sure we haven't lost it. It's going to be the HA. Come on, where'd you go? This thing is eluding me here, this HA. HA DBE new, that is correct. There we go. All right, so now we have HA, S2, and O3. So what are we going to do now? Well, uh, we're going to take these stars together. We want to make a combination of these stars. Uh, I find that uh, S2 and O3 are the best stars to use. So we're going to eliminate the HAs by dropping them over here. And we're going to do some pixel math on these to combine these two sets of stars together. So we go to process, all processes, and pixel math. Double click the expression editor and find these images. So we want to find O3 registered DBE stars. Right there, double click. We want to do a plus sign. And we want to go ahead and find the other one, which is going to be a the same except for S2. So it'll be S2 registered DBE stars. And that's down here, it looks like. There, S2 registered DBE stars. Double click. Now, we want the oxygen to be louder, if you will. So within within this... Uh, pixel math 
pro uh, process, we have the ability to add and subtract and multiply and divide, which is pretty cool. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just come in here and do a parentheses right after that plus sign. And we're going to reduce the level of this by multiplying it by 0 0.8. And we're going to say times, which is the shift and the 8 key with a little asterisk right there. This turns red right in front of the plus sign. So we have a term added to this term multiplied and we close this to, to uh, complete the expression. I can get it the right direction and it turns green. Okay, so now what this is saying is we want more of this one. We want 20% more of this one than of this one. So let's go ahead and do that. We come down here and say, okay, and we're just going to drop this right into the O3 right there. All right, let's check and see what we did. Let's go up here to image and reverse it so we can see the difference. You look there, see this is brighter. We'll redo it. This is the combination of O3 and S2, and this is just the O3. So it kind of brightens up the stars a little bit and makes them look really nice. All right, let's uh, kick this out of here, put it over there. This uh, is going to be renamed. Now we're going to rename it Combo or Combi Stars because it is a combination of both of these. So I'm just going to call it Combi. Okay, and we say okay. Let's iconize this over. Okay, now we're all set here. We need to come in and do some work on these uh, guys here. Uh, we see that obviously they have not been stretched yet. See, they're turned black when I go to this. So we're going to save this off. Uh, you know, we could use the script and easy, you know, uh, easy processing suite and uh, soft stretch right here. But I find that this doesn't work as well. Just in general, my experience is that I can't really get this to work very well. So we're not going to we're not going to use it. We're going to come up here and we're going to take this out. Save it. And we're going to save it with a name that we understand. We're going to call it two and underscore PS. And what this is telling me when I look at this is that, that I am done with this process and I'm sending it to Photoshop. So uh, this indicates 32 bits floating point, which is what we want to save this as. It's done. Let's do this to all of these. Let's go up here and do file. Save as. Again, we want to rename it to PS. Hit it. Uh, again, OK. And now we want to do the last one, which is our HA. Bring our HA up and save it. Save as. And we'll call it uh, H. HA and we're just going to go ahead and say uh, HA 2 PS okay you say save save and okay all right so now we have these three files and they're all named so we're going to put them over to the side here out of our way so we're not confused I can these down, put them over here. We're not throwing them away. We're not going to use them, but in case something would happen, we have them there. Now we're going to open up Photoshop. We'll open up those files. And we'll find them. They're HA. S2 and O3 and notice the 2PS is how I can just immediately tell and of course the date here and time so we open these okay 
All right, let's stretch these. Let's start with HA. We're going to go to image. Now this is what we do every time when we stretch in Photoshop. We're going to go to mode first and hit 16 bits per channel. And I found that for Nebula, if we just go to equalize histogram, immediately we get a pretty good result. So we're going to say OK for that. Open up S2, same drill, mode, 16 bits. We say equalize histogram right here. We say OK. And we go ahead and open our HA. Open our O3 now. Image. Mode. 16 bits per channel. And we again go to our equalize histogram. See how fast that is. Now these aren't completed yet. What we're going to do now though is we're going to be very careful here. We want to make sure, especially on this O3, it's a very, very uh, impressive picture. And you can kind of see the, the little little wisps out here. We want to make sure we really keep those nice and crisp. And it, it's quite a bit of processing to, to make this look, look good. But we're going to do it here. We're going to go to Image, and we go to Adjustments. And let's start out with the levels. Let's pull this levels over just a hair. Okay, and we're going to then begin to stretch this just slightly. Go to curves, pull this over just a little like that, do a little bit of an S curve and pull this up. Now, we don't want to pull it up all the way like this because we're just gonna we're just gonna end up blowing that stuff out. So the best thing to do is to keep it keep it you know within reason here. Something maybe a little more mid-tones, maybe we keep it pretty pretty quelled here. And I'm going to say probably about like that is all we need right there. Let's go image adjustments and levels. Looks like we're good on the levels. Okay. Now we're going to come into the camera raw filter. Click that. And we're going to see if we can go in here a little bit and... Uh, you know raise this in because what we really want to see here see these really beautiful wisps we just want to make them really really classy looking here without a doubt so let's try sharpening them just to see what happens now see when we sharpen we get we get some pretty cool stuff but we start to get those artifacts in there so we don't want to go too far with sharpening we may want to go up just just a hair and uh we are going to do some noise reduction here. Just a little bit of noise reduction. Let's try sharpening again. Let's try maybe something like that. Maybe a little bit less noise reduction. We just want to make sure we don't we don't uh, kill the wisps off. Now right in here, uh, we're going to go to basic now. We're going to come up in here and we're going to use this uh, dehazing tool. And you see the dehazing tool is really cool because it, it gives us a lot of contrast. So we don't want to go to clear out here because we're, we're seeing too, this is becoming too dark right in here. So we might want to go out to maybe 40. See, here's our zero point. Maybe up a little bit more like, I'm going to say somewhere around 49 or 50. Now let's look at the clarity. We can really go crazy with it. We don't want to go that crazy. We want to get as much three-dimensionality as we can. Now what I'm looking at right in here is this thing. Kind of a kind of a swirling group of fingers and we want to make them look three-dimensional so what we're going to do is is mess around with this clarity until we see see that's looking flatter now we don't want to go all the way in we want to come somewhere in the middle where we see some really good stuff see how we're sort of trading off the outside for the inside something like maybe i don't know about like that it's going to be pretty pretty far out there Kind of going out on a limb here. I think we're going to be good about right there. Okay. Let's look at the texture. Now we bring this over and it really gets fuzzy. We take it over here. It gets a little, little brighter. And I think for this we want, we want quite a bit of texture. You know, to give us a really good sharp look. But if you look right in here, you'll start to see some noise appear. Watch it right here. See that? We don't want that either. So it's, it's kind of a tender adjustment here. I'm going to say maybe something like. I don't know. I feel pretty good about that right there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's go back to here to the detail again. 
and let's see if this noise reduction does us any good. I think we're going to be too soft if we use that. If we go all the way over, we're getting a lot of noise here. So we're going to use just a hair of noise reduction. All right. And in fact, I believe we're going to call that quits because I'm going to use another noise reduction tool that I have uh, that is actually better than this. Let's go back to basic now. Check everything we've got right here. I think we're good. Looks like these are in good shape. We're going to say OK. All right. Now let's go into uh, filter and at Topaz Labs and Topaz Denoise AI. I bought this software. It just works so well. So it is a you know it's a plug-in that you buy for you know for use here with Photoshop. So let's go uh, let's go up here a little bit. Let's look uh, let's look about 200% here. And let's see what we got now. If we got standard noise, let's go to severe noise, and let's just recover the detail, pull this, you know, all the way up to 100%, and maybe not enhance the sharpness so much. Remove the noise up to about 80%, and let's see what we do when we slide this across. See if we can see any difference. Now, probably on YouTube, you can't see much difference there, but I'm seeing quite a little bit of difference. Uh, when I pull this over and I'm liking what I'm seeing so we're going to remove about 60% of the noise it's always better not to go too far because it will tend to look too flat uh, you know sort of uh, smooth like icing on a cake you know we don't want to make this look like icing on a cake we want it to be very fine alright so let's see what that does I think that's pretty good let's go ahead and apply that all right now I'm gonna come in here I'm, I'm starting to see I, I, I think we we really should have just a little bit more brightness out here if we could get it let's go one more time to image adjustments and and uh, curves got to be very careful here I'm gonna to try to come down in here just a slight bit about right here and see if we can boost this up just a little now the problem is when we do that see we're getting a little more a little more out here but I'm afraid we're gonna blow this out so I'm gonna choose on the side of lesser so we're just gonna say cancel and keep it just like this all right we're done with this one file and we're going to save as save on my computer and we're gonna say stretched as our code name just stretch now we know that we're done with this one uh, we're done with the 03 all right let's open up the other ones let's go to ha and let's come in here and let's do a similar thing with it let's say image um let's go and look just for a moment at the levels i think we can pull the levels in on this just a hair like this about and let's go up here one more time let's go to curves and let's just see see what we got here see if we can go just a little bit down we don't wait we don't want HA to be too prominent in this picture honestly yeah something like maybe I'm gonna say about like that it's just all about eyeball here okay let's do a filter and let's go to a camera raw filter again same drill I'm gonna pump this up to about 300 so we can see it uh, let's take a look here let's go to just like we did with the dehaze, a little bit of dehaze going on. Just a little bit. Clarity. Come out just a little bit with the clarity. So it looks pretty three-dimensional looking. Something like that. Maybe just a hair of texture also. Okay, let's go down to our to our details. Let's do a little sharpening. slight bit of noise reduction okay and we're gonna say okay it's like that now we're gonna run our topaz labs noise again Let's boost this up to 200% take a look at it Let's see what we've got here severe noise let's try uh, just standard noise uh, we want to enhance the sharpness remove the noise I think that's pretty good Let's see what that looks like.
Okay. Just maybe just a little bit too much of the enhancing the sharpness. Let's back it down just a hair. And actually, we're going to move the noise a little bit less. Kind of back this down a little. I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of maybe a little too much uh, play going on with those right there. Now that's looking a little nicer. See that? Probably on YouTube, you might be able to see. Okay, so I'm thinking that looks really good. It's just in boosting the signal to noise ratio, which is what we want it to do. All right, let's head over here to this one. Uh, we've got our uh, 03. Let's see what we can do. Image adjustments and levels. We'll pop it over just like we did the others. Do some curves. Curves. Let's move this over just slightly. Do a little bit of an S curve on it. Come up like this. Really at the very top, I think, is where I'm going to see this. And this is really blowing out pretty easily. So we don't want to do that. We'll come up maybe something like that. That's about as much as we're going to get out of it right there, I think. We don't want to blow this out. All right, let's go into uh, Select Now. I'm sorry, um, Filter and Camera Raw Filter. Same grill. Boost it up so we can see it a little better. Okay, let's do some basic sharpening. A little bit of noise reduction. And we're going to come down to our... basic rather sorry now we'll come down into dehazing just a, just a tad clarity try something about like that texture let's raise the texture just a little like that we're going to say okay now we're going to our noise Filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise, 200%, and we're going to take our standard noise here, see what we can do with this thing. Let's go to remove a little of the noise, even more of it. Maybe a little bit too much sharpening going on there for that. I like that right there. Let's say apply. Okay. Let's check one more time for our levels. And sometimes we get we get a little get a little bit of noise, a little noise loop going on right there. We pull it over. All right. File. I'm going to save as. We'll save this as stretched. There's a stretch. Okay. Okay, we got to save this one next. We haven't done that yet. File, save as, stretch. It's quite a rigorous process, but, you know, in the end, we come up with a picture that looks pretty nice. All right, we're done with this. Let's head into Photoshop, open these up. File, open. They're all the stretched ones with the control key. There's HA stretch, S2 stretch, and O3 stretch open. Here they are on our screen. Let's take a quick look at these. Let's make them up big. It's as big as they get, it looks like. All right. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a linear fit on these. And I find that that makes it makes it better, but it's very important with this one to choose. It's important to choose the color you really want to see, and that is definitely 03, because this is that beautiful blue that we see on the on the finished product. So we're going to use this as our reference. Go to process, all processes, and we're going to find linear fit right here, and we're going to iconize this 03 now down, put it up in our reference, okay? Now we're going to drag this into our other instances here, our other narrowband images. 
We see we get the little windmill spinning here. We're all done there. And now we'll do it to the other one right over here. Now you see this, this tends to really reduce these, but don't worry about that right now. Uh, usually it comes out pretty good. All right, so this is our HA now, and this is our S2. It really re re uh, repressed the S2 quite a bit. And then we got our O3 right here. And this O3 is, is, our, is our, our, uh, our reference for linear fit. Okay, now we gotta change these to gray. Let's go up here to process. Color calibration, uh, it's here, color space conversion. There we go. And we convert to grayscale. We say gray. Open the other one up here. Okay, we're gonna get this RGB gone. With color space conversion, convert to grayscale. There's another gray. Another RGB, open it up. Process. Color space conversion to grayscale. All right, we've got three three gray pictures now here, and we're ready to combine these. Let's see what we get. Let's go process, all processes, channel combination. And we're going to iconize this one down is the HA, so it's going to go in green for the Hubble palette. We iconize this one down. This is our S2. Goes into red. And finally, our O3 and it goes to blue. All right, we hit the button and see what we have. Okay, we had a very blue looking image, that's good. And uh, we do have you know, some greens out here, a little bit of color showing. Uh, this is our first SHO example. Now, obviously this is not complete yet, but what we're going to do is save this again. And we're gonna save it into a title. We're going to call it SHO. This is our first SHO representation. Underscore. And we're just going to say uh, 2 PS. And again in Photoshop, we are going to work some magic. We'll save this as 16 bits. There. Now we've saved this file. Ready to go back into Photoshop. We're going to open it up. Let's get rid of these. Take the confusion away here as much as we can file we say open and we open up the SHO to PS right there now in Photoshop there's this really cool really amazing function and it is I just love to use it let's uh, let's zoom on to the screen full screen uh, what we want to do is we want to open up um, image adjustments and we want to go to selective color right there selected color okay now the first one we want to choose here is greens and this is something you'll have to memorize uh, we want to we want to reduce the cyan down and we want to change the magenta and reduce it down just slightly something like that and we say okay now we're going to go to Again, image and selective color. It's adjustments, selective color. And we're going to go now into yellows. And we're going to remove the cyan down from yellows. And this is bring, starting to bring up this these red colors out here. You can see that. And we're going to move this also. And we move it just a little bit. We, we, we want some we want some some variation here. This is causing more greens uh, in the picture. Maybe something like like this. See some variation. We say okay. All right. Then we go to image adjustments, selected color, and we will head down into the cyans. Now for cyans, we're going to make the yellow go up and the magenta go down. Now this just gives us just maximum blue, okay? Um, it's pretty blue. I'm not sure if we really want it to be that blue or not. Uh, it's possible, you know, that 
kind of overdoing it here. Uh, let's just take a look. Now that's pretty blue. So we want to kind of, you know, maybe maybe look at this a little closer, see what we want to do here. Maybe something like this is looking pretty good. The blue is certainly tempting to blue that out like that. It's all up to you in your taste, your color taste here. Um, normally I don't really mess too much with the cyan in this. Uh, something maybe like that. And sometimes black can help us brighten up the areas a little bit where we've really blackened it out so much it's ridiculous. So maybe we can, you know, maybe do a little of that. That gives us a little more contrast in the blue. You know, it's very, very subtle here. Now that's looking better. We see a little bit lighter blues here, darker blues. You know, we're seeing some highlights. So let's keep that. All right, let's uh, take this back down, uh, thin on screen. Okay, now we're gonna come in here and lighten this up a little bit. Let's go to levels, see what we got. Levels are fine. I'm, I'm looking to see that this is over all the way. Uh, and we're gonna to, uh, do select here, uh, in, adjustments rather, curves. And we're just gonna kind of, kind of stretch this up a little to see some, I see a little more, a little more meat to this system. Now actually, you know, if we go up too high again, you know, we don't want to like blast, you know, completely blast this thing out like this. It's just too much. But we do want a little bit of brightness there, you know. Something like this maybe. Down just a hair. Up at the end. I know I'm kind of liking that. Let's see what the S-curve does for us. And I don't think we want too much of an S-curve on this one. We want something that's not blown out, but it's pretty bright and brilliant looking. Maybe something like that and say, OK. All right. Let's see now if we can. We're going to come in and uh, just try to do a little bit of selective adjustment here on the curves. Let's try going into our reds. We'll go out on a limb here. Uh, because we're not really seeing any information out here. Let's see if we can bring up any of that information to give us something else, you know, to, you know, to, to, to fill in, fill in the voids there because we really don't have a whole lot going on. Okay. So this is always, you know, we can always individually control these somewhat. Just a skosh up like that, maybe. And that gives us some some contrast there it gives us more reddish colors that look like they're sort of reflecting light i kind of like that got a little more redness over here all right let's go to image adjustments and levels let's go to our red again and make sure that our levels are set correctly we're going to go over maybe about a two or a one let's take it over to about a one Okay, now let's do one more thing here. We're going to go into um, our camera raw filter one more time. Very powerful camera camera raw filter. And we're gonna go down here even in here uh, with our color. And we can play around with this as well, uh, somewhat. It's a little hard to see sometimes. Let's go up here to about 400% see quite a bit of noise we go in that close seeing noise up in here we may be able to remove that a little bit but let's go to the oranges and reds see we don't want something that's crazy like this we want a nice neutral neutral colors uh, see what we got with greens I think this is just about everything we're going to do here um, we, we want a nice blue color. We don't want any purples 
or greenish blues where I really love the blue color that's what we're really looking for so let's just go out on a limb and keep that blue like that looks pretty nice okay all right kind of a dark image uh, I think it looks pretty nice uh, we may go just into one thing here uh, in levels uh, adjustment layer sorry new adjustment layer so we go to layer new adjustment layer we do maybe just a little bit of brightness because it's it's so it's so dim the image we're going to run the risk of blowing this out so we can't do that but let's just try to see if we have any kind of brightness that can help us here see we're seeing some good stuff on the outsides but not so good on the inside so here's what we're going to try let's uh let's take this back to zero We're going to go out on a magnificent limb here, folks. Let's see if I can just get that in as zero so we can move on. Yep. Yeah. Let's try something here. Let's go to filter. Sorry, select color range, okay? And we're going to basically leave that right where it is because the black is what we're not going to touch. And so we may come out just a little bit further out. something like that maybe and say okay let's just see if this actually makes any sense sorry about that let's go to color range move back just a little like this and it's really pretty strange but oh I know what we're doing wrong here we're not on the right layer sorry about that we needed to be on the background so let's go to select color range okay leave that about where it is and we're gonna say okay all right now we're going to just protect this these innards here and I always forget which way it is so let's go to image adjustments and levels and we'll go to see right away about what I'm affecting okay that's good see I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm not affecting this at all so this is what we want to boost out there so that's perfect so let's cancel that now what we're gonna do is come in and we're gonna kind of blindly do this it's it, it does work we, we can't go too crazy We've got an RGB okay and we're just gonna kind of try to pull up the outside of that a little bit like this a little bit of an S curve kind of go up like that okay and this is going to accentuate all this stuff out here. Let's see what that does. Select, deselect. That looks pretty good. We're starting to see a little more details out here. You see that? Way out here that we didn't have before. Okay, I like that. Let's try one more adjustment, adjustments and levels. Let's make for sure here that we can't gain something here by turning up some of these levels. Looks like we could gain something. Now when we go up like that, we're seeing a lot of you know good goodness coming out of here, but it's starting to look a little weird looking also. So we don't want to come up that high. We want to come back just a little. Maybe, you know, here's where we were at one. See, it's kind of dark. So we want to come up a little bit. Oh, I don't know, maybe something like go out on a limb. Not too much though. Maybe something like that. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and keep that. All right, as one last thing, we're gonna come in here to the filter again in Topaz Labs, and we're gonna see if we can benefit at all from this tool one more time, especially out in here. So let's uh, let's go up and do like 200% uh, here. Let's, see, let's take a look right in here, what we've got. This is standard noise, remove noise. Uh, let's not recover original detail or enhance the sharpness at all. Let's kind of keep that down low. Now see that is making quite a nice difference and and I'm sure on YouTube you probably can't see it but if you look right in here yeah it's kind of looking fuzzy sort of grainy now watch when I move this over see that takes it right out makes it smooth but still doesn't completely eliminate and ruin the stuff in here we still 
Have some nice little wisps in here. Looks pretty darn good to me. I'm going to go ahead and say apply. All right. We've done enough damage to this. Let's uh, save as. Save on the computer. And let's say stretch. That was quite a massive stretch. Thanks for hanging in on this video. I know it's quite a long video. But we're really kind of kind of doing it to it here. Uh, let's see now. Let's cancel this because something seems odd about this. Let's make sure I'm saving this right. We want to save as. And we save it. I just want to make sure we don't lose resolution here. Stretch. And actually, you know, we have stretched it. Um, we'll just call it, let's call it cell color. Because that's the main thing we did. Let's just say cell color. We have done a little stretching and, and brightening, but let's just leave it that way because we did use selective color and that was the main thing we did here. So let's save that. Say okay. Okay. All right. Now let's open this back up in Pixinsight and compare it. Open. Right there. So color open. All righty. You see, the other one was much darker. This is more more reddish colored. Uh, this is a little darker, maybe. I don't know. Maybe somebody actually would actually like this more, but I kind of like this better. Um, you know, not just a bluish dark, but more of a reddish color around here. Uh, it looks like we got a lot more detail going on and better coloring, lighter coloring uh, in here, more detail. So I think we're going to keep that. All right. Now let's come back up here and let's do our final, final uh, uh, operations here. We're going to go to get our get our combi stars. Um, right here combi stars we're going to open those things up now let's see what we've got we still have to stretch those so let's go to saving these uh, in Pixinsight uh, here we'll save them in Pixinsight but save them uh, as a name we can understand or we're going to go do a quick operation in, P in uh, Photoshop and be done with this alright save it as 32 bits Stars are very important in a picture. Uh, it, it can make or break a picture. So I found that by opening these up and doing this, it seems to work pretty well. So we're going to open. And we'll open up these stars. All right. We're going to go to image mode <coughs> and hit 16 bits per channel. And we're going to leave this like it is, local adaptation. We say OK, and then we're going to come in to Image and Adjustments and Levels and back it down a little because it does look pretty noisy. <coughs> Maybe go down something, something like that there. We don't want to get rid of too much of it. And it's looking like also we're going to have to uh, come in here to to adjustments and curves so I'm just not liking what I'm seeing here it's it's very very um, kind of a noisy looking background we don't want to do an entire you know change to this so I'm thinking uh, these stars are just really not looking like I like to see them right now just to be honest let's try one more thing let's try some brightness Let's take a brightness down just a little. That tends to start to make the stars look like little circles. We don't want that either. Okay, let's try this. I'm going to go to uh, Edit and undo Levels. Undo 16 bits. Okay, we're going to go Image Mode and 16 bits. And we're going to see if we can make anything out of this with uh, the exposure and gamma. Now this takes quite a long time to do. I didn't want to do it for the video, but let's just see let's see what we can come up with here. Let's raise this up a little bit to, to start with. Image adjustments, curves. 
pull this end up a little bit. And image adjustments and curves one more time. Image adjustments levels. So we're good on levels. I think that's about all we're going to get away with right there. Uh, it's just the stars aren't looking as good as I'd like, but let's call it quits there. Let's do an image adjustments and curves, and let's take some of the red out. You look, you see, see in here, see this red in the background, and we can click that red. Click on that red. It just doesn't look right to me. It's too much red. So we'll take that out just a little bit like that. A little red out of it. very subtle let's try that right there okay save file and save and save as and we're gonna say this has been stretched okay save go back into fix in sight open these up let's see how they look All right, uh, they're a little bit, a little bit less than the stretch here. Uh, not as, maybe not as round as I'd like to see them, but I think we're okay. I'm uh, not round. I mean, as far as uh, halos. So let's go in here and uh, try to fix these stars up a little more. Let's go to process and all processes and go to blur exterminator. And we're going to adjust this down a little bit, put that at about 20, leave these alone. Let's see what we can see here. Let's, let's kind of go in a little bit, take a look. Let's hit it and see what happens. All right, let's toggle this back and forth and see what we see. I think I kind of like that better. It's tended to kind of subdue the stars a bit, maybe more than I wanted to. Uh, but I like it. I like the way it looks better, just in general. So let's go to redo that. Let's keep that. Uh, we're going to now save this one more time again stars are so important so I'm going to spend a little time on the stars here save as let's go PS again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and use 16 bits but come in here and use something I've used before it works pretty pretty well open there's our file open um, this is pretty cool program here I'm going to use um, and I want to show it I'm going to view this just trying to get it larger on the screen fit on screen there we go what we're going to do here I'm going to use a software from pro digital software it's called star spikes and you know you can use this I'll show you here in a minute you can use this to put really big spikes on the stars you know you can just go crazy with it uh, let's just let's just show that right away here see so you can put like giants you know it looks like some some a postcard on a on a on a uh, you know for a movie or something so we don't want to do that but what we're going to do here is pretty cool we're gonna put a lot of points now see you can change the number of points right down to nothing to only one which looks like a bunch of comets in the sky or two or four you know six whatever we're gonna pick this up really big here a lot of points all right and the thing that is cool about that is it makes the stars look very round and beautiful actually maybe a little overdone you know but what we're going to what we're going to see here is we're going to, we're going to choose a, we're going to choose these not like that you know we're not doing it that way we're going to come over here to this show button and we're going to show one of them. Let's show this one that's up here. See that? Too much. Okay, so we're going to hide it. Let's hide it back again. 
Now, the intensity is what we're going to remove. Let's get the quantity back up here and kind of like look at intensities. Now you notice, see, I can, I, can, I just have a, I have a playground now, folks. I can make my stars bigger, smaller, you know, whatever I want. So I'm going to pick a few of them here, maybe like like that, and make them a little bigger. All right, like that. Let's see what we got. Let's make them just a slight bit larger. Go with intensity one more time here. Quantity, okay. And uh, we're going to say OK to that. Now we're going to open it up again. Select and open it again. Filter. Pro Digital Star Spikes Pro 4. I'm going to try it one more time. So wh what this is going to do is it's going to give us um, some differences in stars all around the picture. Now, of course, we don't want something like this. It's just a bit a bit crazy. Let's reduce the number here again. And you reduce the intensity a bit. Maybe take the number of stars up a little bit. We're doing this to see it's all a matter of kind of kind of playing around with it to make it look natural. Okay, so I think that's pretty cool there. We're getting kind of a, a different a different look in the stars. You know, some of them see some of them are bigger now than the others. Gives it, you know, quite a bit of um, you know uh, uh, dimension. Okay. So let's say file and um, let's do one last thing here just to make sure. Image adjustments and levels. And we're going to come up just a hair brighter, okay? Ever so slightly. Maybe about 120, something like that right there. I like that. All right, let's say File, Save As. And we're going to save this as Stretch again. So we're going to actually say Star Spikes. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go back into PixInsight. Let's combine these together now. Let's open up what we made. File open. Star Spikes open. All right. If you take a look at this now, it looks looks pretty cool. We've got... Uh, see how we've, we've kind of accentuated the, the, the brighter stars? You see that? These aren't as bright, brighter here. Just looks, looks This one looks more three-dimensional and better looking to me. Okay, so that's just a little technique I wanted to show that I've used before. Let's go now to combining these. Let's put them down at the same values here. We're going to come in now and just combine these together. So we'll go to Pixel Math, Process, All Processes, Pixel Math, and uh, let's just go ahead and combine these. So we've got SHO to PS, Expression Editor, SHO to PS, Cell Color. That's our first one. We go plus. And then we want to put in our stars, which are the combi registered DBE stars. And I think we have the word star spikes on there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right there, star spikes. So double click. All right, let's just keep these at one to one for now. See what they look like. We can change them if we want here. Very simply, we're going to drag this now into our picture. All right, there we go. I kind of like it. The stars are not too bright. I think we've got a good uh, a good thing going here. All right. In this image, it's uh, interesting how the stars, in, on some images in Nebula, you add the stars in, it kind of takes away from it. This sort of adds to it. It kind of, kind of, kind of smooths out this this background makes it look a little less red than it was and looks pretty nice i uh, i like that all right uh, i believe that that's it um the last thing we need to do is do a crop so let's just do that real quickly all processes dynamic crop hit the button come in here and crop it over just a bit on each side something like that because there was some kind of odd artifacts going on here i saw let's get the handle the right way here 
right on the edge there was kind of some artifacts I saw right here so let's kind of come in here we got plenty of image to work with let's try to see if we can pull those artifacts around get rid of them something like that all right so with this tool we want to drag it always drag it first in case you want to use it again say yes and crop bam all right well i think this is the end of another video uh i feel like we've got a pretty good image here we've got we've got some pretty pretty nice uh clarity the stars are not too blown out uh, we don't see much noise in the picture. We've got nice intertwining of these colors. We got some pretty nice looking wisps right in here, you know, that we didn't lose. And a few down here. It's just a, a beautiful, a beautiful image. Uh, right in here, we got, you know, a lot of nice stuff going on here. Beautiful. All right, well, that's it for this video. And um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around. And this is Dwayne. This is Dwayne Melvin Astrophotography, and uh, as always, uh, we'll see you next time. Clear skies.